What if there was a company that didn't follow tradition, despite being in an industry full of it? When one says the word cruise, you often know what to expect. But what if I told you that there was a voyage that would challenge every single element of the word cruise? Would it be good or would it be bad? And is there something to be said for following tradition? After all, it's gotten the cruise industry this far. In my eyes, there's only one company that's managed to get away from the traditional sense of cruising, a cruise line that's not even called a cruise line. And that is Virgin Voyages. I spent eight nights on board Valiant Lady, and you're about to come along with me. Welcome aboard, Valiant Lady. My trip started off in a snowy Toronto the day before the voyage, and I flew down to Miami on Air Canada's premium economy, which by the way was amazing. It's rare to get a 787 on this route, and they actually fed us so much the entire flight, I was stuffed by the time that I landed, which I would need for an embarkation day. So I had a great night here at the Fortune House Hotel in Miami. It was a really tiring overnight kind of journey, but it's embarkation day finally to join Virgin's Valiant Lady. Now in many ways, this is the uncruise. So I'm really excited as somebody that's been on so many traditional cruise ships, that's worked on traditional cruise ships, to go on a ship that really wasn't designed to be a cruise ship. It's a resort ship. So let's go ahead and check out what Valiant Lady has to offer made our way down to Virgin's very own terminal, which was as on-brand and quirky as you might think. Now, since we had Rockstar status, we actually entered through a different way. Now, this band was now our key charge card, and each and every one of them had a nice saying on it. Now, it turned out this sailing wasn't actually full, with just over 800 or so people aboard. Therefore, we didn't have to use any of the lounges, as there was no wait to head aboard. First off, I love how immersed we were in the Virgin brand from the get-go, from the decor to the colors, and of course, the crew. We're officially on Woo! vacation, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the Valley We walked right into the roundabout and the DJ playing. I loved the atmosphere. And for the first time, I really felt like the party had started. Our first stop was our cabin, which was on deck 14 aft, and it was quite the walk. Our room number was 14014Z, which was a sea terrace, but this wouldn't be our cabin for the entire voyage. I'll tell you more about that in a bit. Virgin uses A and Z to determine which side of the ship that you're on. Z is the right or the starboard side, while A is on the port side. The cabin was really nice, it was well appointed, but it did feel quite a bit tighter than other balcony cabins that I've stayed in on other cruise lines. Now one big benefit though was the rainfall shower, which every single cabin type has, as well as the same bathroom layout, which is tight to say the least. Now I'm going to be showing you a few different types of cabins, so make sure to stay tuned. By this point, we were starving, so we headed up to the galley, which had a great view of this British Airways A380 on approach to MIA. Now, the galley is what many would refer to as the quote-unquote buffet restaurant, but this wasn't a buffet. The waitstaff come to you and you do order off of a menu, but there are still select items you can go ahead and grab, including these quick-to-go snack boxes, as well as popsicles, which I highly recommend. I just had a quick PB&J sandwich, and it was really interesting seeing how the galley worked for the first time, because it did take some getting used to, as this was a really new, unique approach to what is usually the quick service buffet style restaurant. At that point, we headed to our muster drill, which involved going to the muster station, getting a life jacket demonstration, and then heading to the dock house to grab a drink. Now, I love where Virgin's terminal is placed because you have a great view of the turning basin. Celebrity Summit did its dance, and just before we set sail, we headed over to Richard's rooftop, which you needed this key card in order to access and is only for people with rockstar status. Every day from five to six, there was a champagne hour, and at Richard's rooftop, that was Moe, and it was a lovely way to get the voyage started. The 
ship actually displays text on its exterior as it sails away from various places. And on departure this evening from Miami, it said, I heart 305, which is Miami's area code. I just thought it was so cute. But what do you think of the ship displaying text on its side? Let me know in the comments below. After departure, we headed to Extra Virgin, which is the ship's Italian restaurant, also which happens to be my favorite cuisine. Now, something to point out is that all dining is included at Virgin Voyages. There are no upcharge restaurants. The decor was gorgeous. You could actually see the chef preparing some of those cheese platters. Now, I started off with the artichokes, then I had the cod, as well as an old fashioned. And by the end, they actually surprised us with a complimentary shot of Frangelico, which was a really nice touch. While I was at the table, I actually booked our group tickets to the first night show called Untitled Dance Show Party Thing in the Red Room, a venue that we would come to know very well throughout the cruise and served a multitude of purposes. But nothing could prepare me for what this show actually had in store. This show was incredible. It was completely different from any other show I had ever seen in my life. It was completely immersive. In fact, they actually moved the stage around the audience multiple times throughout the show. Be sure to go to it when you get on board Valiant Lady. After the show, it was a cheeky drink from the Sip Lounge and then over to the Manor, which is the ship's nightclub. It's actually named after the recording studio that Richard Branson met his wife at. This is arguably my favorite spot on the entire ship. It was so well designed and felt like an actual nightclub. Eventually though, it was time to head to bed because the following morning was the first day that I got to put the ship through its paces. Day began with some poolside chill, which by the way was awesome. They were playing the perfect music. Then I headed up to the training camp and did a high intensity interval training workout. Fun fact, all of the classes are free on Virgin. And that was followed by a much needed lunch at the dock house on deck seven aft. Now the menu itself wasn't that extensive. However, they do have quite a few options that aren't listed. So be sure to speak with your server. Now they were perfect for a snack or a lunch that was kind of healthy. There were hummus and veggies, shrimp, and this amazing graham cracker dessert. You can't beat the view either. Arguably, this was one of the best places to chill outdoors. That was followed by an extremely competitive game of air hockey, which I lost, by the way. And then I actually headed into the arcade, which is all included, a nice touch. Now this is all in the social club, which is on deck seven midship, and you can easily forget about it. So if you're walking past that part of the ship, go ahead and check it out. Forward on deck seven is the grounds club, which is where I got a macchiato. I really needed it because I was going to a workout class, but a nice thing about uh, the coffee approach on Virgin Voyages is that they actually just use a regular plastic cup and they just pop a paper lid onto the top. And that's really forward thinking. It makes sense. But I know that not everyone is going to like this. So what do you think? Do you prefer paper cups or do you commend the reusable cups? Make sure you comment below and let me know. Now, again, I needed that coffee because I was actually heading to a bungee class, which was really fun. A little bit nauseating though, an insider tip, don't drink a full coffee right before the class. My stomach really hurt from the pressure, but otherwise it was great. After a brief trip up to the net, we headed to our cabin to change up for dinner. And we also caught some of these gorgeous ocean sunset views. Tonight's dinner was at The Wake, a restaurant that I was really excited for. Now, visually, this restaurant is stunning and the service was great. However, I didn't necessarily enjoy my food here at all. And really the biggest thing that I found was that the tables were so close together, so much so that I felt that I was in everyone else's conversations. One of the restaurant managers was actually great about reseating us. He reseated us about three times, but every single seat that we were at was so tight. 
At the end of the dinner, he asked for feedback and we were pretty honest about the food. And he insisted for us to return so that they could make it right, which I really appreciated. After what I would say was a pretty disappointing dinner, we turned to the entertainment to save the day. And as always at Virgin, it did. I booked the Misbehave game show through the Virgin app. Now this is a game show that was actually developed in Vegas. The host and the assistant were hilarious and the audience went insane. There were all sorts of naughty references throughout the entire show and it was hilarious. The assistant actually turned out to be an aerialist, which was an amazing touch. If you get on board Valiant Lady, do not miss the Misbehave show. This was a really drag-centric evening on board and I loved it because it's different. It made this cruise seem so normal, not stuffy, so real. The ship's diva had her show. It's called Around the World with the Diva and it was a great time. There were dance performances, singing, and of course a bit of a game show as well. It's kind of like being at a gay bar, but times 10 in the sense that it was an actual show. We were exhausted though, so after grabbing a quick pizza from the pizza place, which by the way is some of the best pizza that I've ever had at sea, we headed to bed because the next day was our very first port of call. As soon as we woke up, we headed ashore to catch our shore excursion, which was an all-inclusive beach day. Now it involved taking a safari bus about 45 minutes west of Puerto Plata. On our way, we drove past Amber Cove, which by the way is a private area built for and used by Carnival Cruise Line. The beach club itself was nice and the drinks were good. We did end up going snorkeling, which was an adventure as you can see, and it was nice to just chill by the beach. On the way back, it was kind of funny because a few people needed to pee. So 15 minutes into the ride, we had to stop. And uh, that gives you some insight into how the day had gone so far. Once we got back to the port area, we actually saw that there was a beach club right there inside of the port area and it was gorgeous. So if you're going to Puerto Plata, take advantage of this area. They even have their own performances. It was awesome. After meeting up with some friends at the port, we headed back on board. Now this evening, we actually headed to bed quite a bit earlier than other nights. We did head up to champagne hour though, and then decided to take a nap, which lasted until the next morning, which really wasn't a problem because it meant that we were well rested for one of my favorite ports, San Juan, Puerto Rico. The ship wasn't set to arrive into San Juan until 11 a.m. and that meant that I had some time to spare. So I headed up to the galley for some breakfast. Now, as I've mentioned before, they do have a menu and they also have some great grab and go options. This morning though, I had my beloved egg white omelet as well as a vegan sausage. Soon I headed out to the open deck to see our arrival into San Juan and to see the historic Castillo San Felipe del Moro, which dates back to the 16th century and was built by the Spanish. Carnival Magic and the brand new Carnival Mardi Gras were in port as well. Now, I loved getting to see Carnival Mardi Gras up close and personal after hearing so much about her. But as much as I could go on about ships all day long, let's focus on San Juan. We actually got a guided tour of the old city and checked out a number of the historic landmarks. Overall, this is a really walkable port, so I would highly suggest just going for a walk in San Juan, grabbing a map, or even getting a guided walking tour. One of the highlights was getting up close and personal with the fort that we saw as we sailed in. So the fort that we saw as we were sailing in to San Juan is actually this one. It's called Castillo San Felipe del Moro and it's absolutely gorgeous. We're here on the fifth level of the fort, but it actually descends another four stories below what you see here. In the 90s, the fort was actually declared a World Heritage Site. But no matter where we went in San Juan, the ship was never that far away. Let's just take a minute here though to recognize how much I love ships. I actually used to work for Carnival Cruise Line, among others as well. But what do you think? Should I go ahead and review Carnival Mardi Gras? It looks beautiful. Comment below and let me know. But the best thing about ship life is that sometimes you run into people that you know. So amongst all of the cruise ships that are in port, I found a long lost friend that's in port too. 
This is my friend Rachel. We actually work together at two other cruise lines and we've actually been all over the globe together. In fact, our friendship began in Australia and she happened to be on another ship that's in port. This is why I love ships, friendships that truly take you around the world. After a long day of touring around, we headed back aboard to check out Razzle Dazzle. Now Virgin says that this is the restaurant to indulge your naughty and nice. And the theme actually dates back to the Second World War, specifically camouflage. The idea here is that they're being transparent and in this case, about being veggie friendly. This is a very vegetarian friendly restaurant and was actually my favorite on board, both in terms of design as well as the food itself. This section here is called the Red Bar and it's said to be a favorite of the ship's diva. My husband's pasta was actually themed the same way as the restaurant. Now I had this tomato and veggie soup plus an impossible burger that hit the spot. And for dessert, we actually had churros as well as milk and cookies. Now the milk was actually flavored with cinnamon. I love the food here. I found it unpretentious and really good. We left San Juan behind, we headed to the manor for a show called Never Sleep Alone. It was actually put on by none other than the ship's very own sex therapist. Now listen, if you're down to let your hair down, watch this show. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but I will say that there is fruit involved. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, despite the manor transforming into a nightclub, Right after the show ended, we actually headed to bed in order to prepare for a beach day in beautiful St. Croix of the US Virgin Islands, plus a visit to the spa. My day began in the galley with some fresh fruit. Shout out to these bento boxes, by the way, that had berries and granola in the morning and then changed for lunch and dinner. But after seeing some of those eggs Florentine, I decided to order some for myself. Today we were docked next to Royal Caribbean's Enchantment of the Seas in St. Croix, US Virgin Islands. Check out this cool sea turtle that was hanging out right next to the ship. It was a bit of a windy day, but we managed to head to the Sandcastle on the Beach Resort, which by the way, was gorgeous, highly recommend. The beach was a bit rocky and the waves were a force to be reckoned with on this particular day. But what I loved was that the ship was in sight. We were starving by the time that we got back on board. So naturally, ice cream was the first stop from the aptly named Lick Me Till Ice Cream. And that was followed by a cake pop from the dock area on deck seven, where not only do they have some sweet treats that are awesome, but they also have vegan hot dogs as well as popcorn and incredible shakes, which I'll tell you about later on. But first, let's head to the spa. Now these are all individual showers, which are beautiful, as was the rest of the spa, and it had the usual spa fare. However, what I loved most was that all of the marble surfaces were heated. There were cold plunge pools, which I barely could do, but there was also a hot tub, sauna, steam room, and a salt room which is said to be great for the skin as well as the sinuses. As Enchantment of the Seas sailed away, we enjoyed our champagne on Richard's rooftop and then got ready for my most anticipated dinner of the cruise. I was so excited for the test kitchen. Now this is an experimental restaurant and it consists of a series of smaller courses. The theme of the restaurant was impressive, kind of like a chic laboratory and was easily my favorite of the entire ship. I chose to do the beer pairing, which was a lot of beer. Every course, they bring you a new beer. That's like six beers. Well worth the $25 for the pairing though. So if you do get on board, make sure you take advantage of that. I loved this salmon dish as well as this beet thing. Each and every dish was unique and different and it contributed to the test kitchen experience. The dessert was an asparagus ice cream and it was interesting, it was out there, different. We decided to go ahead and keep the party going, considering we already had a buzz. Then we discovered the groupie, which is just outside of the red room. Now you could easily miss this spot, so I'm glad that we found it. 
It's actually a series of karaoke rooms that are free to use. and We had a blast here. There was a larger purple room and a smaller red room, which could accommodate your entire party. In fact, they'll even bring you drinks. It was so much fun. We sang here all night long. The reservation slots are about one hour each, but sometimes you get lucky and nobody's in the slot after you. We had two sea days heading to Bimini Bahamas, but I also still had to be up early for my workout. Most importantly, the following night was Scarlet Night, and after this amazing pizza, it was lights out for me. After a morning hit class, I headed to an event that I was really looking forward to, the Richard Simmons VHS workout, complete with shake weights. All of the music and outfits are 80s inspired. Now, this isn't a class that's really going to tire you out, but it is a ton of fun. I would say it's actually a must do, so make sure you bring something vibrant to wear to the class. Now, I would go ahead and say that this class was mostly ridiculous, but again, a ton of fun. I was starving after the double workout, so I headed up on deck in search of food. And I found a fruit box as well as an egg white omelet. I also stopped by Gun Bay, which is actually where I'm gonna be eating later on tonight. Now, I always feel like I'm doing too much when I'm on the ship, so I force myself to hang out by the pool, where they play awesome music, by the way. It totally feels like a beach club. Lunch was had at the Sun Club Cafe, and I was excited because I love a good salmon poke bowl. But the wait was about 45 minutes, which was insane. And after I got it, I'll be 100% honest, it was pretty tasteless. Still hungry, I headed to the galley, where I had a PB&J toast with some banana on it, as well as admiring some of the desserts. Plus, I discovered that the outdoor seating area is actually right between the end area of the galley, and this was rarely used, and it had incredible views. As the sun began to set, the mood on the ship entirely changed. The ship was in store for a party, in fact, they even had face decorating going on near the roundabout, which I gladly had done. Of course, this was all before dinner, because you gotta maximize that look for as long as possible. Gunbei is a Korean barbecue restaurant. It's super casual, and the food is cooked right in front of you. The menu itself was actually creative. So basically, we ended up ordering everything on the menu because we were all a group. Now keep in mind that you will be sitting here in groups of six, so get ready to get social. Now we had made a reservation as a group and we had a blast and we even played a drinking game that was facilitated by our waiter. Now the crew at Virgin Voyages are special. They're real, they're super relatable and arguably they were the best part of the entire voyage. Now let's get back to the food because there was a lot of it and it was all prepared table side. It was fun to try a bit of everything because this wasn't cuisine that I would usually have on my normal day to day. Plus, we would need all of the fuel that we could get for the party that was about to ensue. First, all of the ship's hallway lighting and exterior balcony lighting was set to red. And then the performances started. And it wasn't just in one spot. These performances actually moved. It first started out at the roundabout, and then it progressed down the ship. There was actually a special show in the Red Room that was explaining the story of Scarlet Night, which, by the way, is totally made up, of course, but you buy into it. The atmosphere was electric, and I loved how this theme night spread through the entire ship. It all culminated in an amazing spectacle on the pool deck, complete with the ship's drag queen, the diva, and of course, the octopus. The performances to start off the party up on the pool deck were awesome.
long before I was in the pool as well. It was hard not to. So if I were you, get ready to get in the water on Scarlet Night. This was hands down an epic party. Let's be real. Everyone was hungover after Scarlet Night. The ship was pretty quiet the following morning. Somehow though, I managed to down an espresso and to hit the gym, as well as to resist the urge to have junk food in the morning. And then I found a seat along the promenade deck and watched a celebrity summit passed us by. By the afternoon, I headed down to the loose cannon and I helped out with some puzzle activities that my friends were doing, but mostly I just enjoyed these pretzels, which were amazing. When I got back to the cabin, I found this note from the Shore Things team regarding an issue that we had on one of our tours, mostly that the food had made us sick. Despite me giving them an account of what happened, they refunded me $20 because my husband had been charged for an activity that he shouldn't have been charged for. Otherwise, no other refund or compensation was given, which I found surprising. That afternoon, I got the chance to check out some other categories of cabins, which were interesting to see. Now, the ship's forward section is actually not comprised of balconies, which is what you might think. Those cabins are just labeled as forward-facing ocean views. They're not balcony cabins. Now, in the case of the cabin that I'm currently looking at, this is actually a single cabin with an interesting layout. I actually really enjoyed it. The view was gorgeous. Mind you, I thought it was interesting how this isn't a balcony door. I really felt as though it would be. Now, another thing I wanted to point out is the bathrooms in these cabins are pretty much identical unless you're in a rockstar suite, but they do all come with that rainfall shower, which was really, really nice to use. Otherwise, the color of the mirror actually changes, not this one, but the one that's closer to the vanity, depending on how you're looking at it. So it goes from orange and red down to different hues of purple and then eventually green. Everything in your cabin on Valiant Lady is controlled through these tablets. So if you swipe up, there's actually different presets. For example, get it on mode that'll actually close the blinds, change the lighting, and even play a little bit of music for you. This is a single inside cabin, and it's pretty much the same as any other room. It's just a little bit tighter and meant for one person, but it comes with the same bells and whistles, including USB ports as plugs and that same gorgeous rainfall shower. Mind you, the bathrooms on Virgin Voyages are quite tight in general. Originally, we started up on deck 14 aft, but we moved to this cabin on deck 12 midship after there was a noise issue with our old cabin. However, I will say I loved that there was a tablet to control everything. I thought it was super modern, but it is relatively tight for two people. There isn't enough storage in the closet. There's only one closet, so my husband lived out of his suitcase for the entire voyage. Also, the bed is meant to be set up as a sofa in the day and a bed in the evening, a practice that I didn't actually see being done at any time while we were on board. Your cabin controls for makeup cabin and do not disturb were on the inside of your closet just by the door. As the sun began to set, I was excited for Virgin's legendary nightlife. This time, it was actually a variety show called It's a Ship Show. This was gonna take place in the manor and it came complete with dinner. Now. I'll be honest here, folks, the food was mediocre, but dessert was the best course by far. What saved the day, though, was the show itself. The performers were incredible, from acrobatics to jugglers, hula hoop artists, and so much more. This show was really, really cool. But that actually wasn't the only show that was on the docket for the evening. I was surprised at what I saw when I walked into the Red Room something really cool and really unique. Behind me is actually what is usually the stage here in the Red Room, but what they've managed to do is create stadium style seating because it's supposed to be dual reality tonight. That's the show, one side versus another. So they've managed to move some of the seating actually onto the stage. This is such a cool multi-purpose venue and it's so transformative. Dual reality started off with the performers in the audience and then moving to the stage area. It was immersive, and basically it was telling the story of Romeo and Juliet in a different way. You can see the acrobatics, of course, through this move here, where they controlled how quickly that they actually touched the ground. It was 
hair raising to say the least. And then of course there were the flips and acrobatics, including some aerial work here by this incredible couple. After the performance, we decided to head to the social club and play some board games. In fact, Virgin actually stocks quite a few top tier games on board for people to play. I tried one of the shakes as well from the social club and it was so good. It actually had limoncello in it, which I adored. So definitely go ahead and try it out when you get on board. We were quite tired after that. So I headed up to the cabin and decided to try out room service. Now, Virgin actually calls them Ship Eats and you order through the app. It was pretty cool. It came pretty quickly. However, the quality of the food was atrocious. I would actually go ahead to say it was borderline inedible. What I did love though, is how everything was packed. Very functional and different. Bimini is one of the most beautiful ports that I have ever been to, and Virgin has their very own private beach club here. It's a short five minute tram ride from the ship, and I was amazed at how clean and well kept this beach club was. This functions like any other cruise line owned space with food included and drinks that get charged to your onboard account. Now there were actually two pools as well as volleyball courts and plenty of beach loungers and cabanas to rent out. I actually found out that this beach club gets rented out as an excursion for other cruise lines when they dock in Bimini. In the middle of the day, they had this amazing pool party as well, and it was complete with floaties, bubbles, the DJ, as well as dancers. It was a perfect final port, and in true Virgin style, it was a ton of fun. The food was actually really nice here at Bimini as well. But as quickly as the day had started, it had also come to a close. After a gorgeous day here at the beach club at Bimini, I am really sad to be leaving and going back to the ship. And it's also the final night. Heading back on board, I felt the same feeling that I have on any final day of a cruise. Sadness mixed with a bit of relief that at least I had one more night. I got some great shots of the ship, but what do you think of her design? As the sun began to set, I got ready for dinner at Pink Agave, the final restaurant that I had to check out. Now, this was actually the ship's Mexican restaurant, but of course, that would be after our final champagne hour on Richard's rooftop, as well as a beautiful departure from Bimini. Interestingly, those lights off in the distance are actually from Miami skyline. That's how close it is. The entrance to Pink Agave was near Sailor Services, and it is beautiful. After walking down a hallway of lights, we were led past all sorts of tequila to this massive table. Now, don't get me wrong, the table was gorgeous, but I would have preferred one that was in a little bit more of an intimate section, which was right next to it. Virgin does aesthetics really well. Ordering was really straightforward because we wanted to try a little bit of everything. But the one concern that we had about Pink Agave was that the service here was really poor. We felt that the waiter that we had had a bit of an attitude and that kind of hampered our experience. The food looked beautiful and it tasted all right. It wasn't anything out of this world, but it wasn't terrible either. The company that we had was awesome though, so that made up for it. Also, dessert was once again the best course. And after a walk to burn off that dessert, the final night's entertainment commenced, and it was pretty low key, a 70s and 80s party in the manor. The morning of turnaround day, I woke up to see the bright lights of the ships that we were passing in the channel. So I managed to get this incredible time-lapse video of our arrival into Port Miami. Now most of our packing was done, but we still needed to reorganize in the morning nonetheless, as, as you do. Virgin's terminal actually has a really unique view as you're docking facing to the west, so you can check out parts of downtown Miami. After heading up to the galley one final time, I caught a gorgeous view of all of the other ships that were in port with us as well.
My breakfast was this avocado toast while my husband decided on the breakfast burger, which, by the way, was monstrous. Soon enough, though, we headed down to the roundabout where the gangway took us back ashore and into Port Miami. I couldn't believe that eight nights had already flown by. There are so many things that Virgin is doing right. For example, how they treat their crew. Their entertainment is excellent and the ship itself is gorgeous. There still were a couple of things though. For example, I wish that I was able to see the front of the ship and there was more of an observation feel. I felt really disconnected from the ocean on this ship. Also, the food was hit and miss. Overall, cruising with Virgin was refreshing and I cannot wait to sail with them again soon. And just like that, the cruise is over. I can't believe it. It was full of some incredible experiences and of course, a completely different product. I hope you enjoyed coming with me. Make sure to stay tuned for so much more content coming your way. And of course, I can't wait to see you again soon. Until then, travel safe.